In this video, we're going to take a look at creating scatter plots. Scatter plots are helpful because it gives us a picture of the relationship between some data. So let's take a look here, and we have some data. We're given a set of years along with the wins for a particular baseball team. This is the Minnesota Twins by chance. Well, first thing that we want to do is set up our labels and our scales on each of the axes. Well, in this case, I have all positive data, so I'm going to be focused in the first quadrant of the coordinate plane. Sometimes we might have some negative stuff, so we might need to be in the other quadrants, but in this case we're focused in the first quadrant. Then, if I take a look here, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 pieces of data. So I want to set up my scale so that it will include all of those things in a reasonable fashion. So I look at this and I think we could fit all of those years with one line apiece as we go across here horizontally on the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and set up those labels. So we'll start right here with 2005 and I'm just going to put 05 and then we go 2006 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013. Okay, so these are the years. And we should always give a scale and then also give a label to tell what that particular information is so that we can interpret the picture that we come up with. Now, on the vertical axis right here, I need the number of wins. So as I look through this list, I see the smallest one is right here at 63, and the biggest one is at 96. So I need to make sure I include both of those values, and obviously then everything else will fit in between there. Well, I could start at 0 and go up, but since I just go from 63 to 96, maybe I could just focus in and maybe start at 60 and go up to 100, because that would take everything, and, and let's uh, go by fives. We'll go by fives. I think that'll fit in there. 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, 100. That'll fit nicely on the grid that I have here. Now, if we don't start at zero, it's important that we put a break in our axis to show that what we've done is zoomed in on a part of the graph. So if you don't start at zero, and we can do that, that's okay, we should make sure we put a break in there. That's an important piece. Now, I'm going to start at 60, and then, like I said, we'll go up by 5. So 60, 65, 70... 75, 80, 85, 90, 95, and 100. Okay, and this is the number of wins, so let's just put wins over here. Okay, so then we go ahead and plot our data, and we'll see if we can see any trends in our data. So starting in 2005, 83 wins. So we go up here, 83, well it would be just a little bit over halfway because halfway would be 82.5. So we go like that. Then we go 2006, they have 96. It's just a little over 95, puts us right there. 2007, 79. So there's 80, so just a touch below there, make a point. Then we go 2008, 88 wins, put us right there. 2009, we have 87, drop down just one, tiny bit less than half there. Then we go to 2010 at 94, puts us right here. 2011, 63, ooh, big drop there, down to here, and then we go 2012, 66, and 2013, back at 66, 
Okay, so we can take a look at our data here and kind of notice, well, before 2010, the lowest season we can clearly see, oh, it was this one, 07, which was 79 wins. So not too shabby in this stretch, but then they've hit a rough patch here where the last three years the best they've done is 66. So scatter plots can be very useful in easily getting a picture of data and then we can kind of pick out, hey, what are, what are some interesting things that we notice here? And we can also do things like come up with trend lines and make predictions off scatter plots as well in some different situations. So here's our scatter plot. To create a scatter plot, first thing that we want to do is come up with our labels and our scales for our axes. And then we go ahead and plot our points. Remember, if we don't start at zero, we should use a break to show, hey, we left some stuff out here, and we're zooming in, and then plot our points, and then we can easily see that picture and pick out some of the most important things are things that are interesting. Like here we can see clearly this is the highest number, 2006 was the most wins. Okay, hope this video is helpful. I hope the Twins win more games in the near future, and uh, keep working hard on your math. You can do it.